and and perhaps the hospitality industry is um is, because of the frequent turnover i'm guessing this is a bigger yes. problem in hospitality than it is in multifamily. well yeah. all it takes now tell me if, if if you're living in a big building and not to scare some of our listeners you know more and more people are renting these days um if there's one if there's a if there's a resident in a unit and they have a bed bug problem can that bed bug spread throughout the uh, apartments? Can they spread from room to room? Sure, and they and they normally do through the structures of of the buildings. Yeah. But I thought they're and lazy, then, right? I thought they're lazy that they'll just stay on the bed, right? What what are you telling me that if you have yeah. a hundred hundred unit building, one of these residents has a bed bug problem? There, yeah. you, you can you can spread so, the building. Yeah. So once they nest, uh, they start reproducing, and once there is a large enough number of bed bugs, around twenty to thirty uh, new bed bugs that that are, um, um, you know, born, it's it's getting crammed in that nest, just like it would get crammed if you would fit I don't know twenty people in a in a in a in a hotel room. So you start venturing out. And, uh, and that's how they then start spreading from room to room, too. They can colonize yeah. an entire building. Yeah, and, and at worst, a uh, whole... Uh, it's actually quite typical that it gets into a whole floor. Um, and at worst, into the whole hotel, so that it actually needs to be completely uh, refurbished and, um, and torn down the, uh, the walls. Because it's too late at that point. Yeah, exactly. Would any solution yeah. work? Could you use? I guess you don't want to use insecticide on every corner of your room, but like a heat treatment. No one. Mm, yeah, it's once it gets really, really bad, you just need to get rid of all the material. So, uh, in a in a kind of light bed bug, in the regular bed bug infestation where there's just one nest in the room, um, hotels need to throw everything out of the room. And, and you know, causing that huge excess waste of, of furniture. If it's a really bad case, you need to start getting into the walls too. So furniture so, too, that, that means that yeah. you could be buying yeah. secondhand furniture on Craigslist and unbeknownst to you, you may be inheriting like an infestation of bed bugs coming. Could be, and that's also pretty typical too. But normally if it's a professional company who are like, let's say a professional um, living, provider like a hospitality company the the kind of infested materials are um are um you know thrown out in a way that they don't get into into craigslist probably but uh, but that happens a lot from consumer to to another though yeah yeah this is um something to bear in mind for people that like to travel what what's the best practice you, you travel a lot it's unavoidable <laughs> Whether you stay in a hostel or you stay in a five-star luxury resort, bed bugs do exist. And um, their occurrence, one would think you see more of them in lower end ho hospitality groups. Is that true? That's actually a fallacy too. Um, it just, people just have this, people have created this narrative or not people, but, but there's this narrative that's created around bed bugs that it's a problem of lack of hygiene and and lack of um you know cleanliness but it has nothing to do with the socio-economical status of of the traveler nor the hotel um let's say that um you know better it's like covid it doesn't discriminate it, it yeah exactly and that's that's again coming back to the analogy coming back to the analogy they spread like a virus and and up until today there hasn't been a vaccine to answer your question thankfully today um, the best thing that travelers can do is look for the Valpas label on hotels sites or consult our website valpashotels.com where we basically list all the safe hotels that carry our standard where you can visit and return back home uh, safe. So. Um, you probably don't want a vaccine. Having a vaccine would mean you're immune, which probably would mean they'd feast on you all day long. And, you know, unless you want to inject particles in your bloodstream that, you know, the uh, are deterrents, which basically means <laughs> insecticide in your bloodstream, right? Um, <laughs> there is no real solution. Yeah. It seems like you're well positioned to deal with this. Before we talk about your, your solution in more depth and, and sort of, uh, uh, you know, running a company, 
Um, if you're traveling um, and you arrive in your home after travel, what should you do with your uh, luggage? What should you do with your clothes? Should you leave everything outside? <laughs> how, how should you make sure you don't bring the infestation into your home? And I'm asking you this too, because I'm about to travel throughout Europe. <laughs> so, you know, th these are good words to follow. Yeah, so, um, yeah, when you arrive to the hotel room, uh, before accepting the room, check it. Um, you can consult uh, our blog. There is a guide to do a proper bed bug check inside the room and try to see for marks of, of, of bed bugs in the bed and the vicinity of the bed. Um, then after you get back home, um, before placing anything into, into your room, uh, just um, put all your belongings into a 60 uh, degrees uh, washing machine program and then inspect visually with a light, um, a light bulb or like a um, yeah, flashlight your, uh, your luggage and, and, and look for bed bugs. So this is the old way of dealing and trying to avoid bed bugs when, when you travel. And I'm sure store your luggage away from your bed, away from your room, away from any place where people can visit. Is that gonna help? Um, yeah, certainly don't leave your luggage, uh, especially not under the bed, uh, preferably right. in, I mean, in the can you, can you, can yeah, you bathroom. That? Can you imagine that, right? That's such a common thing to leave your luggage under yeah. the bed. How yeah. short of a journey for those lazy bed bugs as you emit carbon dioxide, like many insects attracted to carbon dioxide, all the bedbug has to do is just go straight up and bite and multiply. And they can infest your luggage and also your, uh, your, your bed itself. So, you know, scary, scary situation there. Martin, talk to us about running a, a, a hardware company here too. You're, you're building a very interesting company in that, and I, I sort of coined this phrase when we spoke once, extermination as a service in some ways, where you are not necessarily relying on exterminators to come to you. Your device can function and do what an exterminator can do, but it's there, it's real time in your room or in your hotel room or apartment, and it's constantly detecting. And it's constantly, um, it, it, it's constantly alerting you to the state of things so that you can replace an entire industry, right? Yeah, that's right. So um, Valpos is introducing a bed bug safety standard for the hospitality industry. And what it means is that uh, whereas just as we've, we've gone through today, uh, you never know when you have uh, bed bugs, you never know uh, when you get them and you need to always uh, deal with them as they occur. Um, and you experience losses, reputational and financial ones. Um, Valpas makes all that go away, makes all existing solutions op obsolete by being the full solution for hospitality providers um, while working preventively. So bed bugs never become a problem because the Valpas standard uh, collects and eliminates any bed bugs on behalf of guests and stops them from becoming a problem to the hotel or the guest back at home. So in fact, actually, we at Valpas, we see ourselves as um, kind of empowerers. So we empower hotels to solve this issue on behalf of guests. And with that, enable the safest stay there is today across hotels and the whole industry. Martin, many of our listeners work in real estate. They, they may hold various functions and they have an idea to disrupt uh, because they've seen a problem firsthand. So they have an idea to disrupt a process and create a company. You came from the same problem. You ran a extermination company effectively. You pioneered a heat treatment and became one of the largest players in Finland and had a nice exit after you sold your service-based company and you now created a startup. When you went through the process of creating, did you do any customer validation? Or did you feel like you knew the problem first time and you could get straight down to product? Absolutely, there was a ton of customer uh, validation and discovery. Uh, in fact, there still is. It's, it's an ongoing uh, process and 
and in my view, one of the most important functions for uh, a startup founder, that, that constant discovery. I want to pause for a second and just double <laughs> highlight this. There is no yeah. excuse not to do any customer validation. You know, if even if you are an expert, right? And yeah. you experience the problem and you're in industry, far too many people in prop tech um, see themselves, fancy themselves as experts and go and build a solution that they think they need. And I think it's too egotistical. I don't think anyone, I, I, don't, I think it's too risky to also be Steve Jobs. And frankly, it's like a bed bug. You're being lazy. It's hard work to go and talk to customers, especially when you feel like you already know the problem. But it's dangerous if you think you know the problem and you just go and you, you know, you build. Do you, do you want to expand on that point? Yeah, I think, and, and I think that, you know, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs is a great example of a person who did constant discovery and validation. Uh, he just didn't believe in asking customers uh, what they want or what they need because customers don't really know that. That I absolutely agree. But discovery and that validation is more about asking the right questions in the right format and then connecting all that information into some uh, key insights and then validating those insights with uh, early um, early versions of your product like prototypes and then uh, building it after that. But anyways, I think one of the key things that uh, I've learned as a, as a founder and our whole team is that when you speak about product, product does not equal technology. Um, product equals tech plus positioning. And I think that many companies get the tech right. And especially, you know, coming from Finland, uh, we're, we're pretty well known for our kind of tech savviness, you know, Linux, Nokia, all these huge companies uh, and important companies and important software came from Finland. And, and, and we're highly, um, uh, you know, savvy, savvy in tech and we know how to build great tech. Uh, but then I think that the Finnish bias is to not focus at all on the positioning. And the positioning is basically how you are perceived and, and, and how do your customers see you? How does the whole uh, markets see you? How does the general public see you? And, uh, and kind of developing that because um, that is equally important as the tech. And this is something that in the beginning, as a first time startup founder, you, um, you did not completely realize. And I think that that is one of the kind of crucial lessons that any startup, no matter if you're prop tech or or, or something else that should should keep in mind. And for us, uh, as an example, uh, what we kind of understood eventually uh, was that, you know, we were seeing that this is a this is a problem or not. This is a this is a topic that is not discussed, you know, and because it has a negative stigma because, you know, bed bugs, they are really sensitive topic because they, they, they come to you during the night, they attack you, they violate you, and there's no good solution to it. And so uh, hospitality uh, was really hush hush about this whole topic uh, when we were starting to develop uh, Valpas. And for good reason, there was no good solution. And it's a really sensitive issue. It's a huge, it's the number, it's the biggest service failure you can have as a, as a hotel. Um, and so people that were kind of uh, didn't want to talk about it because there was this negative stigma. But then at the same time, we, we saw that, you know, this is a huge topic for travelers too. Travelers, actually, this is the number one feared uh, hygiene and health issue for people when they travel. And, you know, when we travel, we're vulnerable to a number of health and hygiene issues, but bed bugs is, is the most feared one. And so what we realized is that actually, while hotels are, are kind of wary of it, Travelers are afraid, uh, and 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 that's really the the real question. And we saw that there were already sites online that travelers could report hotels with bed bug problems, so that they could avoid those hotels. And we also saw that a number of travelers scan, and a growing number of travelers scan for the hotel's on run, online reputation. And if there is a mention of you know a bed bug review, they just go to another hotel. A book with another hotel. 
So uh, this is the reason we understood that, you know, travelers uh, are afraid of this. And we concluded that because there's kind of this fundamental need we, we humans have to, you know, feel safe. So together with that, we kind of concluded that, hey, you know, if there would be a good enough solution that would keep travelers safe, that would keep people from being attacked and uh, bringing back bed bugs to their home, this would be something that people would like to know. Then it just needs to be, you know, positioned in the right way. And so because of this insight, uh, while the whole industry and the whole market was really kind of sensitive towards the topic, we made the call of making Valpas a guest facing standard. So that now, instead of, you know, reporting the hotels that have problems, you can actually see those great hotels who are safe from it, where you can not just stay safe, but return back home safe too. And uh, it's because of that, that our value proposition today is extremely uh, strong. So we not only uh, avoid hotels, all losses related to bed bugs, but we actually enable a slight uh, revenue increase with, um, thanks to Valpas's distribution channels and online labels that increase slightly the number of guests who want to stay and book eventually with, with the hotel. And it's because of this that, you know, even 15, 16 months into the pandemic, we still have 0% client churn. And we have over 60, 60 highly rated hotels as clients. So we're really seeing these kinds of uh, early signs of a new must have for uh, a new must have hygiene standard for the industry. And this is and this is just a story of, you know, how important that discovery and, and that validation was for the product today.